Tambali is a rural village located in Chenjuju district in western Uganda. This village lies about 250 miles from Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. Chenjuju district, which has just been created as recent as the year 2000, is endowed with good climate, having rains that are bimodal with annual range of 1,000 to 1,200 millimeters and fertile soils in most parts that favor growth of a wide range of crops throughout the year. Katambale life is characterized with wildness and households sparsely distributed in thick bushes and forest. Katambale village has a population of about 5,000 people with close to 1,493 households. Subsistence agriculture provides 80% of the labor force for the estimated 95% population that is rural based. Tea growing is the backbone of Chenjujo and its production is the main source of the district's local revenue. This area is inhabited by migrant Banyaranda, Bakunzo, Bachiga, all of whom have migrated to work in the tea plantains and the indigenous Patoro. FXB International initiated Katambali Village Model Program in October 2006. This model covers the villages of Igoma A, Igoma B, Katambali, Chigando, Kibali, Kajuma Itwala and Kitembe. In the initial stage, FXB concentrated on providing for the active poor to invigorate their coping strength in the wake of the AIDS pandemic. Using the experience we've gained in OVCK in Uganda for the last 16 years, FXB expanded its OVCK program in Uganda to change the district. Previously, we were working in two districts, Nakaseka and Uero, but uh, uh, beginning October last year, we opened up uh, a program in change the district, specifically in Charles Subcount. In uh, Charles Subcount, we picked you know, 70 households to start with. And these households take care of uh, close to 600 children. We have two major objectives in this uh, in the OVC care program. First is to create the capacity for the communities to have adequate response, comprehensively towards care of these children. So that they are integrated in the community and they have access to the basic services, both provided by the state and other caregivers like effects of the civil service organizations. So our effort is to contribute towards bring up these households to a level where they are able to access the services. Then two is to cause, uh, uh, to cause synergy within the provision of services for these children because most of the households that are taking care of uh, uh, orphans and other vulnerable children have already been disadvantaged, have been disintegrated because of uh, the, uh, the overwhelming demands onto them. Paradoxically, Uganda prides herself in a stagnated 7% HIV AIDS prevalence rate over the last three to four years, but HIV AIDS often hold is still on the increase. Records from Katambali village show that in every five households, four have orphans left behind due to HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS still affects many guardians and orphans, as FXP social worker explains. HIV AIDS prevalence is so high in Katambale because of rampant ignorance about the epidemic among the people. Following the FXP survey, it was found out that over 70% widows, widowers or childhood families are a result of the epidemic. There are various infections um, among the people, including TB, herpes, on and off fevers, and general loss of weight. FXP has intervened to ensure that people receive adequate treatment by providing antiviral drugs and other medical requirements. Due to death of parents as a result of HIV AIDS, Pascal Annette, a 17-year-old living in Kitembe village with five siblings, has had to take on the responsibility of head of family. Since the death of her parents, she fends for her siblings, some of whom are even older than she is. Death of parents has denied Pascal and her siblings the exercise of a variety of rights, 
including the right to parentage, love and care, she and her siblings no longer access the right to education, right to proper health, as they cannot provide fully for the family needs. In this family is 26-year-old Ndajizimana Daniel, elder brother of Pasku. His right to health is greatly infringed on due to improper hygiene that has left his entire body infected with jiggers. He is also epileptic. Affected with jiggers on both feet and hands, it has left him and many other orphans in the same category within Katambali almost disabled. Malnutrition constitutes a great threat to the health of orphans in Katambali. Fewer and unbalanced diets are consumed within orphan households. Katsuyami Jackson is a 14-year-old living with his father and eight siblings. He and other siblings lost a mother while she was giving birth to twins, Kakoro and the other that passed. Katsuyami has had to take on the responsibility of looking after the family because his father has since taken on drinking as a full-time hobby and no longer cares for the family. In the same family, a seven-month Kakuru, whose twin passed and is so malnourished. Due to absence of a mother figure, Tumwini Evelyn, a sister to Kakuru, tries to provide and care for him, but she cannot do much because she is HIV positive. While Kakuru needs a lot of food supplements, these are hard to come by as they are so poor to afford. Kakuru is treated with local herbs to help him deworm and also boost his energy. Not certain of what the herbs are, Katshabi, his elder brother, only claims this herbal therapy was given to him by a friend. Many households in Katambali have very poor hygiene and sanitation practices. While body care is not a priority, it is common to find a household without a latrine or a bathroom or one in a very poor state. More so, access to contaminated water is also a major health risk in Katambale village. Water streams from River Mazizi provide water that is not good for home consumption, but the people have no other option. Cases of flariasis include that of Biarhanga Gerevansio. Nyakamaga Erida is a 40-year-old widow living with five orphans in the village of Katambali. One of the orphans under her care is 20-year-old Biarhanga Gerevansio. He is affected with flariasis and is also epileptic. He does not look the age of 20 years. He has damiditis, itchy skin rash, and jiggers. Without any assistance from other private service providers, he and others suffering from the same condition live a life of isolation, degeneration, and hopelessness. Government of Uganda emphasis on free education through the Universal Primary Education Scheme has increased numbers of pupils in schools. This, to a limited extent, has reduced on the burden pyramids have to bear. There are isolated cases of poor households in Katambali that have also been able to benefit. As ABNZ Fabian, 56 years of Kivali village, elaborates. I'm going to talk to you about this. 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 I'm going to talk to you about However, not all poor households in Katambale model are directly benefiting from the free education scheme. A next place example is that of Tuliwami Francis, 52 years of Igoma A village. Hata ikari ya kuhon kataka nake. Ama ziru mwaka kuhona ikari ya. Tugambe mkwa mwaka kuna uya yumewa kusoma. Tugambe alima. Ebino emisiri yo neno. Nebi chori na kinebi takuni wa alima. Nyewe nkaburo mtu wa kugura hana. 
Hakili ngongeni nyombeka kachue kakati na ambiri mbamu. Niko mwana kureki agenda some. Kabura wakua ugura. Hakili agenda yego hafuko kuwa achigonza na kusoma kuunda. Hakunda kusoma munu. Mwana wangu ogu. Na ogu hame na mwisichi ogu alimwanaka. Nibu bana babele niba guanzi somero. Waguanzi somero chonka hafuko kura kasente. Nicho chintu chande tire chizibi. Katambali households attracted poverty because they do not have viable sources of income. A majority of guardians and parents grow crops for home consumption, but are forced to sell some of the food to meet the needs and demands of their children. To mitigate against the escalation of HIV-related problems in households in Katambali village, FXB has started implementing both direct and indirect interventions to provide health care to all family members in the seven households. This is a total of about uh, 600 still because when you put in the household heads and the adults who are part of the families where they live and then uh, these other children directly registered in school. Then we also provide support to those households to generate income based on the experience they have, the viability of the income getting projects and uh, the market within the, their local facilities has to enable them raise income and get the capacity to continuously help the families. Beyond the three interventions which are direct, we have HIV AIDS and uh, children's rights awareness within the communities. These do benefit the households who are working with directly, the 70 in the module, but all the communities where we are working actually benefit. So HIV AIDS, students' rights, then we add water and sanitation, plus other health messages like immunization, deworming, all this benefit the larger communities as well. The support is actually provided within three year period. After three years, FX uh, leaves the household to self-sustain. And uh, the first year, FX is uh, providing support for about 100%. This support gradually reduces to 75% in the second year and in the third year, households contribute 50%. It was designed that was to enable the households gain, gradually gain the, the, the abilities to provide for their family heads. Because in the course of uh, raising the income projects, during those years they keep saving and they are linked to micro credit institutions in their areas so that they can be able to expand their income getting businesses. And uh, we actually provide these services through partners, like, like government services, through, uh, health services through the institution, the health care, uh, health centers, we have government hospitals, and other partners who are working with them.